Okay. Hello and welcome back to RPG Research this October 29th, 2018. And we are, excuse me, uh, continuing our Thursday or Monday meeting. Uh, we've wrapped up our administrative stuff, which we do each Monday for the first half hour, hour, whatever it takes. And then the rest of it is either applied gaming, where we have a game master who's running a game that they're trying to get familiar with and we're training, or we're evaluating a new game. Now, training game masters comes first. That's our priority. When we're doing applied gaming, if we have a game master who's ready to, like, you know, and we were talking about the previous segment, and I'll go over it again because you might not watch the previous segment since it was just administrative dry stuff. Uh, as we train new game masters to be game master level one, we have them first learn with the starter set of D&D 5th edition, the Lost Minds of Handelver Adventure. So we first start them on that. Then we have them learn Adventures in Middle Earth with the starter adventure Eves of Mirkwood, <clears throat> until they get the hang of that. Then we have them learn No Thank You Evil, uh, which is a great game for ages five, age, uh, ages five years on up through adults. Adults have fun with it too. And it's a good way to get our game masters to not be take themselves too seriously gets game masters to loosen up as well and gets other adult players to loosen up and get back in touch with where role playing really is strong which is when you're younger right. kids pick it up like that they don't have any effort to let down all the f facades and all the other crap they're able to just be there and be in the moment um, and sometimes game masters need to remember that we also insist our game masters play as well as GM because if you don't play occasionally you lose touch with what it is like to be a player and then you're not as good a game master um, you know, it could be 90-10, you can only play 10% of the time, but you should you should play periodically. Um, and then, uh, after No Thank You Evil, we make them learn at least uh, Dragon Snot Falls plus one or two other electives uh, of the adventures, because the adventures are 20-30 minutes, they go pretty quickly. Then we have them pick one of the four different starter beginner game box sets for all the different Star Wars time periods. Let them pick which one they want. So whatever Star Wars they know best, as far as time period, excuse me, that uh, they can pick from. And then they get the hang of that beginner adventure. Now those tend to, to actually be multiple sessions. You usually can't do those in a single session. And then we have them pick a campaign that they want. So now that they've got four different systems and settings down, pick one. Now No Thank You Evil doesn't really lend itself to campaigns. So it would be between a D&D 5th edition campaign, you know, the many that are published... Uh, it has to be something published so that other players and such can buy it if they wanted to run it in their setting. Because uh, we're introducing people to role-playing gaming all the time. Our, our, at our programs, there's somebody new every week. Every time, we have new people who have never role-played before, uh, new to the experience, and we're introducing people to what role-playing gaming is. Young and old. All the time. Young and old, all ages. And it has changed lives. We've seen it uh, repeatedly again and again and again. Um, so they can pick a, a, a fifth edition D&D campaign. They can pick an Adventures in the North campaign like Darkening of Mirkwood, uh, or if they want to adapt Tor or something like that, or play Tor, uh, the one ring role-playing game. Or they can pick a Star Wars campaign, you know, something like that. Now, they have electives. If they, want to, if they want to play Cthulhu or Doctor Who or any of the others, that's all fine too. But we want this baseline of D&D 5e, AIM, No Thank You Evil, and Star Wars as a bare minimum. And, you know, all those are starter adventures and one campaign. And then when they've gotten that, they're well-rounded, and they pass their tests, we give them a diploma as a Game Master Level 1 volunteer. That's not the same as a certified Game Master through RPG Therapeutics LLC, but it, it does apply. All the training applies and applies towards taking the certifications through the LLC. You know, it's a separate company, but uh, it is worthwhile experience. So uh, we have a brand new one, which he might be tuned in right now. Um, maybe uh daniel out of brazil is a brand new volunteer who joined us we're just onboarding now and he's wanting to work towards his game master level one certification are you guys cold i am but i'm uh I'm you can thin. turn the heater back on i i turned it off because it was getting warm in here when andy and i were in here but... no this is fine okay um so we're really glad to have him on board hopefully he yep it is i daniel yay hello i welcome welcome <laughs> Um, a quick question, Daniel. In your email, you wanted uh, Daniel Zena Gui or Gui. Okay, just email the forms, Brooke. Thanks. Uh, in one email, you had it with an I at the end, and the other email, you had it without the I. I'm assuming the dropped I was a typo, and that either one, you want the I at the end. Um, and I want to make sure you help us with the pronunciation of the last name and such so that I don't slaughter your name. 
Um, but he and I have been talking over the months, and he's been asking. He sounds very serious about pursuing this, and uh, so he's going to be remoting in initially. Now, if you want, Daniel, you could remote in today if you're up for it uh, by meeting us on Jitsi if you want. Okay, so Dan Zanagui. Okay, we'll we'll do that for your email then. Great. Um, do you do you do you want to go ahead and pull up our Jitsi it's still instance? Open. It's still up. So if you go to uh, meet m e e t dot j i t dot s i forward slash rpg research, you could join us. That's that's what we're using for our video conferencing for now. Um, we're going to try to go to that. It hasn't been fully reliable because we're using the free service. Okay, he's not quite able to get that uh, right now. I don't have a functioning webcam. Okay, that's fine. I understand. No problem there. Um, by the way, you don't need the webcam to join to do a meeting, um, to, to be part of it, like when we're not streaming on Twitch or something. And remember, the Twitch stream always has a delay. So when I talk uh, here locally, which on Jitsi there's almost no delay, uh, you don't hear it on Twitch until potentially several minutes later sometimes. Um, so you are welcome to join even without a webcam just for the audio to say hello if you want to through Jitsi. You are not required to. I know we're still onboarding. Um, so if it's not a good time, that's no problem. But if you want to join us, that's where we meet is through Jitsi. Uh, we will be using a different Jitsi server of our own as I get that dialed in. Um, and uh, as we onboard you, I'll get you that info. So, uh, but anyway, yeah, Daniel's uh, uh, got great background, very interested. Uh, potentially, maybe he's been talking to see if he could move up here or somewhere in the States and uh, pursue this in depth. And I, I hope that we're able to make all that work out. But he'll be, he'll be training remotely until then towards becoming a game master. And the way we, uh, since he's going to be remote, the way we do that is he will run games remotely. We will be here as players and he'll be remoting in and game mastering us. And then as he gets enough mastery, competence, and confidence, uh, we'll want him to set up a, one of his own groups down there to further get more practice uh, where he's at in his location. And so, and work towards those uh, that training. Okay, I'll type out the Jitsi address. Yeah, you bet. Uh, I will do that right now. Uh, okay, and we do have that up on there. I'm fairly certain with them. Why is our video... Let's twitch. twitch right yeah, now. we need to see it on Jitsi. <laughs> yeah, watch him. He's going to run by and he's going to run by again. Um, you should stop streaming the uh, Twitch because that uses up more bandwidth. Okay. So. You should close that tab. Oh, okay. Because that uses a lot of bandwidth to have additional. Because I'm already doing it as well. So yeah. that's that's two of those. Um, and we have mm -hmm. bandwidth struggles. Okay. All right. So we're in there. Are you there, Daniel? Yes, he is. Hello. Hello, welcome. Hail and well met. Can you hear us? Daniel, can you hear us? I think we're having a problem with the audio. Try refreshing your browser because it might be because we came in after him. What's it, what's it saying for network connection? It says, Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear us? Can you refresh? Um, yeah, refresh. Daniel, can you hear us? Hello, hello. We we were able to hear you, Daniel. Something's wrong. Unless maybe he doesn't have his audio. I don't know if he's hearing us on Twitch. I don't know. These are the funds of technology. The funds. Woohoo! <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, I think we can kick him so that it forces a refresh. Let's see here. Uh, can't see. Invite people. Uh, no. Uh, here, I'm typing. Go. Remember how he stopped the camera? Yeah, he doesn't. He's not sending well, video. That's what that says. Oh, so okay. Good for that. Nope. Oh, okay. Now he's now he's hopefully refreshing. Oh, his headset doesn't have a microphone. No, we can hear you. Huh? 
<laughs> the joys of tech. Can you hear us now? Hello, hello. All right, something wrong with the setup. No, we don't hear you at the moment. But oh, there you are. We hear you. Can you hear us? He was there for a moment. Ah, uh, um, and <laughs> all the joys. Oh, this is the whole, that's why it's an onboarding process. It's always a process to get new volunteers set up with everything working. Yeah, it's not like you can go down and help him set up his computer. Yeah, a bit of, <laughs> bit of a drive, that, all the way down to Brazil, yeah. They just had their big election thing, too, I think. Yeah. That's a big deal. Um, we don't hear him currently. Oh, yeah, be yeah. Than Venezuela. Uh, yeah. We can hear you. <laughs> but he can't hear us. How strange. And we are. We'll refresh here. See if it brings back. Hello, hello, hello. Can you hear us, Daniel? Can you hear us? Oh, now I can. All right. So sometimes Jitsi is a little finicky. Sometimes. If, if you stop being able to hear somebody, you have to just refresh your browser. All right. So. Um, I have to do with my honestly bizarre PC setup. I just disconnected a few things, and it's working fine now. Hmm. <laughs> okay, but I'm just letting you know that the Jitsi is a little, it's open source, and it it isn't perfect. But it's, mm -hmm. it, yeah, it does the job. So, uh, welcome, welcome, Daniel. So glad you were able to join us, and we're so glad to have you on board. Thank you very much, Mr. Hawk. <laughs> you can just call me Hawk. <laughs> it's Hawk or Mr. Robinson, but, but Hawk would be just fine. There is only one Mr. Robinson, Mr. Hawk. Okay. <laughs> I'm not getting sure I, I get... Know, what are you referencing? Mr. Robinson. I'm sorry, it was a reference. Don't need to distract. That's okay. That's okay. We we, we sidetrack all the time. Where it's this is the the nonprofit side is a more casual, friendly uh, atmosphere. It's not as stiff as some of the more formal training because you know because that's billable hours. Here we're a little more laid back. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have uh, Riley here. He is a training player archetype specialist. One. Um, do you remember me discussing with you what a PAS uh, is? Uh, if I do remember, uh, it's about you playing a player following a certain archetype in order to train GMs to deal with such archetype. You got it. Uh, you nailed it. And you used exactly the right terminology, too. Well done. Murder hobo. Yep. Kind of surprised to hear that in an official document. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is it is a cultural reference, so you will get that interesting kind of uh, label because it is a it is a cultural reference, so you get strange uh, titles like that. Yeah, it is funny to see that in a, a research document or a formal document to see. Yes, you will learn to become a murder hobo. Yeah. You will be a rules lawyer. You will be a munchkin. <laughs> Yeah, not many other professions you get to say that. <laughs> I'm a professional munchkin and murder hobo. What? <laughs> um, he's gone. Oh, he's gone. He'll be back. He'll be back, Johann Sebastian. I think it's a reference to The Graduate. That's Mrs. Robinson. Right. There's only one Mr. Robinson, her husband. Okay. All right. Could be. We seem to have lost him. Will he be back? Oh. And he's back. Oh, yeah. Welcome back. He's not here yet. Oh, he came and went. He flew on by. Oh, wait, did our stream stop? Are we having bandwidth issues? Is it us? No? No, just, I don't know. Weirdness. Come back, Daniel. Come back, come back to Mordor. We'll take you. It's either that or it's a reference to um, This Is Us. 
I don't know that. Me neither. You know what this is us? Daniel. It's a shot. Hello. Hello. Yeah, so the joy. So again, right now we're using Jitsi's public server, which is less than stellar. Um, you know what? You can help us. You can help us test. Oh, you know what? I think. I think we're having bandwidth issues, because Twitch is acting weird. Um, tell you what, let's try another. Let's try our server to see if it's any better. It hasn't been, but I can hope. So um, I'm typing this in the Twitch channel. And uh, Riley, you're gonna want to. Or I can have Riley type it here in Twitch. I mean in Jitsi. But it's going to be C4, you know, the letter C, the number 4, dot rpgresearch.com forward slash RPG Research. Okay. Uh, okay. C4. Yeah, so you'll want to leave this server and go to c4 dot rpgresearch.com forward slash RPG Research. Let's see if that works any better. Oh, something just unplugged. Those th those are sounds of hardware unplugging and replugging. <laughs> okay, c 4 rpg com slash RPG research? Yes. Okay. He sent it. He sent to us. Oh, he sent it. So that's where, we, let's go try that, see if that works any better as a Jitsi server or if we have the same results. We're going to go there? Yep. We're going to meet you there, Daniel. Hello, hello. Hey, and we've got, yeah, we've got Riley. <laughs> I don't know me. I figured out how to do this last time. Though. Yeah, you have to change your camera setting. Interactions, settings. Webcam. Welcome, welcome. Can you hear us? Yep. Good. Excellent. So we're testing this server out. This is one of our servers. And, you know, it. We're, we're hoping it'll be at least more consistent than the shared free Jitsi server. But it's still running Jitsi. So this is, mm -hmm. we're still testing this one out. We haven't fully nailed it down, but we'll hopefully it'll, it'll behave better. We'll see. All right. So uh, let's get going. We're already lost a lot Hours of time. Behind. Yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and continue on Robin's Laws of Good Game Mastering. And uh, for those of you who haven't had a chance to catch the other videos, uh, through patreon.com forward slash RPG Research, you can catch the previous videos. Because what is this episode three or four? Three of Robin's, three of, Robin's. Of Robin's uh, Laws of Good Game Mastering. We're going through this. 32-page booklet, uh, line by line, discussing it, pros and cons, where we agree, disagree, uh, etc. And when we finished last time, um, we would covered the player goal chart, the different player archetypes, the emotional kick, becoming conscious of what you already do, uh, using the player goal chart, Getting to know new players about what their tastes and such might be, right? Did we cover that? I yes. think we did. Uh, and then picking your rules set. We went into a fair amount of conversation about uh, different types of rule sets and how they appeal to different player types. And winning converts. So you might have a favorite game system that other people aren't interested in. I was giving my anecdotes of that here when I moved to Spokane. I wanted to run Merp and Rollmaster, and nobody here even knew what that was. So I had to do D&D 3rd Edition for a while, until then I slowly nudged them over to Middle-Earth D&D with, with Aya D20, you know, Aya RPG that I created. And then they liked that so much, they liked my Game Mastery, and they were then willing to try Merp. And then they liked Merp so much, they were then trying the, the more complicated Role Master Merp, and then now I had converts, because they loved it. But I had to do it incrementally over several years. One of us. <laughs> Um, and then uh, we talked about crunchy bits, which is basically the mechanics of the game, the really mechanical parts, the the how intense is combat, skill, uh, anything that's rolled and calculated, and the really hardcore rules, feats, special abilities, etc. Um, and his take is that the more crunchy bits there are, the more freedom it gives to players, and the less freedom it gives GMs. 
And I don't know that I fully agree with that. Uh, so I think more detailed rules systems do help reduce ambiguity and and debate over what a rule says unless you house rule it or something. Right. You know, as long as it's a clear rule, not a confusing or vague one. Um, and I think in a lot of ways that actually gives more freedom to the players because if they understand the system, they've, they've got all this opportunity to do all these things. Whereas when it's a very rules light system, you know, fewer crunchy bits, it's much more up to the game master to decide if that's a legal maneuver or not. And as far as freedom of the game master, I think a lighter rule system gives, uh, uh, well, maybe I'm making his point anyway. Yeah, like what well, you just uh, said. Wait a minute. I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> hang on a second here. Uh, oh, but it's a double-edged sword. The, the other problem is if it's a, it's a crunchy bit system that it also limits what the players can do. You don't have the freedom to try something outside of the constraints of the rules. Whereas with a lighter rules system, while it's you're less dependent on the GM, in a, in a crunchier system, you're less dependent on the GM for... A ruling because it's there it's, it's spelled out in a lighter system you depend on the gm but now you have more freedom both from the gm as long as the gm is a, a freer gm and not a micromanager control he talks about gms are control freaks and i've surveyed quite a few gms and a small percentage are right. but a lot of gms are just gms because nobody else wanted a gm and, and they could do it uh but they don't do it because of the control uh the rules lawyers do it because of the control and others do it but i, I think that's a more minority than a majority at least of the good gms um, so with a lighter rule system, yes, you're more dependent on the GM ruling, whether it's allowed or not, but you also have more freedom in that the GM could rule and that's okay. Uh, the, the one ring role playing game is a moderately light rule system. It's not as light as the cortex modified system, thankfully. Um, <laughs> oh man, that's for like the firefly role playing game. I love serenity role playing game. Firefly is the exact same setting. From the exact same publishing company, you know, Margaret Weiss Productions. Right. Really do not like the Firefly role-playing game. Really like the Serenity role-playing game. Right. The only difference is they went from Cortex to the, the, the new Cortex system. And the older Cortex system was pretty rules light. But it had equipment and prices and stuff like that. The newer one doesn't really worry about all of that. It's all abstracted. You have dice pools that you can draw from to say, yeah, I grab a chair. Or, yeah, there's a bottle there. I spend a D4. And it, for eventually going to that, you have treasure points. Okay. And that's it. Yeah. Well, and, and that's why I don't like uh, uh, Tor. The older versions of Tor, and that's what I like about AIM, yeah. didn't have uh, treasure rewards. You just got treasure points. And players don't mm -hmm. like that. I don't like that. People like a tangible reward. Whether it's experience points, whether it's gold pieces, whether it's a potion, whether it's whatever. And just getting a few points, that is not satisfying. Like, oh, I got three treasure points. whoop de do. Barkeep, I'd like to have a beer. How many treasure points is that? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and, and versus, I got 3,000 gold pieces? I got a vial of invisibility? That's cool, man. Right, mm -hmm. no, that they have a it's a very different experience of the game. What they're doing is they're making the game very, very meta, they're making it more drama free form. And I, again, for some people, that's great. I mean, Amber Diceless and stuff, such, but it's interesting how the exact same setting, the same publishers, same style, the writing style is just as much fun as, as the Serenity setting, and the rule system. None of the players really cared for it, like, they love the setting. Did not like the rule system. Wanted to go back to Serenity. And with multiple groups now that I've run that through, it's the same response. Like, there's just not enough there physically. No meat. Yeah, it's too abstract. So you can take that, the slider between no abstraction to complete abstraction, you can definitely take that too far. Uh, I've also noticed with Autism Spectrum, and this is variable. I'm, I, I, we're always talking in generalities here, of course. Uh, but with Autism Spectrum, which a lot of them are drawn to role-playing gaming because the structure and the rules are something they can relate to, and then they can do the, they start to develop the social skills and such through the context of those rules of the game. Um, some are okay with drama therapy. Most find it very uncomfortable because drama therapy is so freeform, right. so open-ended, that's overwhelming. And they, they really like clearly defined parameters. Again, I'm generalizing here, 
but the majority that I, you know, I've worked with a lot of autism spectrum, and that's been a, a common theme. Um, I'm sorry. Um, what was that? Uh, Daniel, we're having we're we're having a lot of trouble understanding you. Do you have bandwidth issues on your end? I think we do. Is it our end? So I think we have a red. Are we are we choking out? It says a red. It has a red circle. On. Well, you know what? We didn't reset our network, so we're having we're having bandwidth issues on our end. It looks like. Oh, uh, we should have that meeting. Oh yeah. Hey, uh, can you hang on a few minutes? We got to reset our router. It's choking out. Just 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 hang out. Hold hold on. Did we just lose him? No. Okay. Hold your thought. I want to hear what you were saying. And we're going to go reset our router. Right. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Right. Thank okay. you. You bet. Thank you. 